During system design interview, many times it asks that if you were an architect of a particular system, how you design the system. So these types of questions mostly asked during the interview. So basically, the interviewer main intention is to check the understanding of a particular candidate of its distributed systems along with that scalability model understanding. So nowadays, many of you guys have heard the buzzword like uh, microservice architectures. And currently, all the industries are moving from monolithic system to a microservice architecture like LinkedIn, Uber or Google, etc. So let's see why this microservice architecture are so important. And also we'll see one more component which we call active MQ or message queues. So this active MQ is one of the major component of microservice architecture. So to understand this concept, let's see one case study or one example. So Uber when started, they started their architecture with the monolithic system. So what that means? So this is the monolithic architecture. So in case of monolithic architecture, all the different modules of a system, like in case of Uber, we have passenger management, trip management, driver management, notification service billings, all these different modules are integrated with each other. It's highly tightly coupled module. And one module is, module is completely dependent on another other module. So if any issue will come in the one module, other module will also get affected. So this is the monolithic architecture that Uber has started when they started the first version of Uber. But they find a lot of problems in that. So like all the core features of Uber, like these passengers, driver management, billings and everything were composed into a single framework. And this single code base with multiple module create a lot of chaos during development as well as deployment. Deployment means when we deploy that into our uh, Jenkins or any kind of a build server. So let's see what are the problems that actually Uber faced in a monolithic architecture. So first problem can be like, let's say any update on a single feature, then all the feature has to be rebuilt, deployed and test again and again. Like for example, let's say if you have uh, fixed one issue into a trip management, then again, you need to rebuild all these different modules, build it and again, test end to end. If any issues are there in some other module because of this change or not. So that is the one problem of monolithic architecture. Second problem is fixing bug become extremely difficult in a single repository as developer has to change code again and again. Then third disadvantage in a monolithic architecture is scaling one module and also parallelly enhancing the new feature in other modules is also very difficult. Like for example, let's say I want to I want to scale this particular module that is passenger management because we have so many machines are required to take the request from the passenger management system or passenger management module and parallelly we want to implement a new feature notification service as well so the problem is the development and deployment for these two enhancements at the same time is very very difficult in case of monolithic architecture so to avoid such problems uber decided to change its architecture and follow the other hyper growth companies like uh, amazon netflix twitter and many others because these companies are already moved to a microservice architecture so uber decided to break its monolithic architecture into a multiple code bases to form the microservice architecture so basically we simply break these modules into a separate entities now passenger management driver management trip management notification service and billing all these different modules separated and we have the rest api different rest apis to access this different services now so what are the benefits that we got here? So whatever the problem that I've discussed in monolithic architecture that we solve in case of microservice architecture, like, uh, like these modules are individually separate deployable unit performing separate functionalities like passenger management is separate, trip management is also separate and we deploy these modules independently. Like if you find any issues in passenger management, just fix that issue and then deploy it without changing anything into the other module because they have already deployed into the system. So this is the one benefit that we got in case of microservice architecture. Like uh, other, other benefit will be all the features are now scaled individually. It means interdependency between each and every features are removed. Like for example, we know that uh, in the case of Uber, like the number of people searching for the caps is more comparatively the people actually booking a cab or making payments. So this gets us to the interface that the number of process working on a passenger management is more than the number of process that is working on a payment or the billing service or notification service. 
so that's why we can easily able to scale this individual module which is passenger management without affecting anything to the other modules so this is also the benefit of microservice architecture and of course the bug fixing will bug fixing will be very easy in microservice architecture so even if like let's say one particular module in the microservice architecture will fail then it won't create problems to the other modules and along with this benefits there is one more module that is introduced in microservice architecture we call it api gateway so this api gateway has a lot of benefits so like for example let's say whenever the requests are coming to a microservice architecture all the request will come through the api gateway so a user don't need to call individual services like driver management or trip management or passenger management or notification service they can directly call through the api gateway and this api gateway will take care of all the routing to all the apis so api management or reverse proxy many names can be given to this api gateway but it will actually simplify or simplify the complexity of the microservice architecture in terms of client a multiple client can easily able to access all the different services inside a in a, inside a microservice architecture just by using a single entry point which is api gateway and this api gateway will take all the management of the different apis along with that let's say when the user is trying to request from this api gateway we can do all the authentication here only itself in api gateway or in case of let's say you want to do some kind of input input validation that also we can able to do that here only and let's say if you want to use some kind of analytics in this api gateway like how many number of users are currently accessing our service today or any kind of analytics if you want to perform we can directly perform here in api gateway itself so a lot of benefits will get while using this api gateway in microservice architecture so this is the little bit introduction about the microservice architecture and there is one more point here and the point is in fact in microservice architecture different modules communicate with each other with message queues they are not using the rest api because rest api is is a synchronous communication but we want a synchronous communication so for that we go for the micro we go for the message queues and mostly we use the active mq in microservice architecture so this active mq used for the asynchronous communication and it's uh, one of the model of a jms messaging queue so let's see how this active mq actually works and uh, how it helps the communication between the different modules <laughs>